Thanks for tuning in to Law and Crime. Michael Bryant here. It was about almost four years ago we had a case you may recall, Skylar Richardson. This is the young lady who goes to the prom, comes home, and it's very exciting, the prom. So she's using the restroom in her parents' home and has a baby in the, in the toilet there. She then proceeds to take the child and bury the child, Annabelle, in the yard. Now she was charged with murder. She was charged with uh, um, mutilating a corpse. She was acquitted on the murder charge. They found that the child was stillborn, therefore you couldn't have a murder, uh, but she did um, get to three years probation, and I believe that probation period is now up, and she's out. Interestingly, she now works for the law firm that represented her in, in that case and, and wants to get into the law. I say all of that because you would hope that that's kind of a rare case, but no. There's a new case that we're turning our attention to now. This is developing out of New Mexico. Uh, Pre-trial motions yesterday in a hearing for Alexi Treviso. She's a 19-year-old accused of killing her newborn baby by disposing of him in a hospital trash bin. The defense is claiming, not surprisingly, that her son was stillborn at the time. This is January 27th. And the state is saying, no, this is murder. Trevisio facing first-degree murder charges, child abuse, tampering with evidence, etc. So before I bring in my legal panel to talk about this new case, uh, let's look at the defense attorney, Gary Mitchell. He's outlining the important timeline for us from yesterday's hearing. This entire case hinges around what happens in a bathroom and the emergency room of Artesia General Hospital on the date in question, which was uh, January 27th of 2023. The timeline will tell you that there's one admission sheet that says 12.03, but by 12.05, she's in the emergency room. Uh, and then within a few minutes, she receives medication. Uh, and uh, through an IV and uh, including morphine and, and several other different kinds of medication. It's a timeline would reflect. Without getting into that too much, she, um, she's examined by an emergency room doctor. She has a nurse that's there, the people come in. There are, the hospital asks for a UA they, they, uh, they, and blood, they do a blood test. And by 1251, they know that she's pregnant. And then we know when it comes to this privilege that according to the, and they happen to have a video camera or some type of camera in the emergency room part of Artesia General Hospital that shows her leaving her room. And we know from the records that at 139, she leaves her, she's, they go in, they unhook her from the IV, uh, let her get up. She virtually runs down the hall, trots down the hall to the bathroom. And then according to the police report that you have from Officer Minter of the Artesia Police Department who reviews that video and goes through it, she's in the bathroom for approximately 18 minutes and then leaves the bathroom and goes back to her room uh, and and then uh, um, by a certain time period and let me pull that up so the court so I can speak intelligently to the court um, we know that at after the 18 minutes in the bathroom we know she's back in the room and we know that emergency room personnel go in and, and they begin, the, the cleaning staff goes in and they begin to clean the bathroom. And uh, later at, uh, and, and that begins at 208. And then by 227, uh, they uh, find the baby. And at 238, the nurse I mean, the doctor pronounces death, and then police arrive after that. So very important timeline, a little different than the Skylar Richardson case, no uh, surveillance video of what was going on that night in Ohio, but we have that here in this case. Rich Schoenstein's here, Krista Ramey here. Uh, so Krista, I mean, there was a lot of uh, extraneous stuff in the timeline there, but it sounds like the defense is going to be, hey, she was given all these meds, uh, and that effectively caused the birth, whether the child was alive or dead before that. Uh, it, it's the hospital's fault. What's your take? 
well, it's the state's burden of proof to prove that that baby was in fact born alive and that um, she killed her. Um, so, you know, right there, you know, the, the timeline of the evidence with the, with the medication that's given, morphine included, um, to her when she arrives to the hospital doesn't really help the state's case. And the fact that she was in the bathroom for that period of time without any, uh, we'll hear, you know, what the evidence is, but if, you know, is there evidence that they heard, you know, a baby crying in the bathroom, then maybe, you know, we've got some good evidence of a live birth, but you have to have evidence of a live birth in order for there to be a murder. So um, I think that it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle with that timeline. Yeah, I understand. Obviously, we're way premature in this thing, but I understand there's been some medical re records suggesting that the child had uh, oxygen in its lungs or at least had evidence of having taken a breath. That's pretty clear a, a sample of uh, maybe life and not stillbirth. Anyway, the defense here, Rich, is arguing uh, an interesting privilege question, I think, with the video footage from the hallway, and we're going to see that in just a moment here. Uh, I don't know that that would be protected under the client-patient uh, privilege. What do, you, what do you think? Yeah, I don't know if it's just video footage of somebody in a hospital. That's not an interaction with your medical provider. I think of the patient privilege as being, you know, your communications with your doctor, um, not what you do in the hospital on the way to see a doctor or in between seeing a doctor. So depending on exactly what the video is of, uh, I'm not sure the privilege would apply either. Yeah, so we'll see how that uh, shakes out as this thing gets closer to uh, formal trial, if that's gonna happen. We do have some body cam footage too from the night in question. Let's watch some of that. Pregnancy test on her showed positive. She was denying that she had sex. Um, then she said she had to go to the bathroom. She went to the bathroom. She was in there for quite a while. We kept knocking on the door. Finally, we got her to open the door, and there was blood and shit everywhere. She was cleaning it up. Okay. So we took her back to the room, and there was, I was afraid that she knew she was pregnant. She had done something to herself. Mm -hmm. um, so the doctor started doing a vaginal exam on her. We had the lady come to clean the bathroom. She put the baby in the trash can, and then she put another clean liner over the top of it. Okay. So they look when they looked in there, it looked there was no trash in there, but it was right. underneath the clean bag. The okay. baby's dead. Okay, we have him in trauma too, but she killed the kid. We discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. He came out and me and I didn't know what to do. Lexi, I told you about this. But if I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. It was not crying or making. What did you do to it? Okay, stop right here. Stop, stop. Do you guys have, I'm the charge nurse here. Do you guys have any questions for me? Like how big is the baby? It's full term. What? Nothing. Nine months? Nothing was crying. Well, right now she's being detained. So she, she's not going to leave from here at all, period. Okay. So one of us is will be in. Is it your custody? Like, yeah, she's detained. Yeah, she's not under arrest, but she is detained. Okay, she's not free to leave. Wow, okay, I mean, that's some crazy body cam footage there. And you see the, the mother, the young girl, she's so tiny, and she was full term, nine months. Uh, Rich Schoenstein, Krista Ramey. Krista, uh, you know, I don't know how you hide that, first of all. And she was a cheerleader, too, which is also kind of something that Skylar Richardson uh, was. Um, but how do you hide that kind of pregnancy? And then, follow-up question, how do you hide giving birth? I don't care uh, if the child cries or not. How does she not cry, the mother? Well, remember, you're not developing a healthy pregnancy here if you're hiding it. So you're not going through the normal weight gain that you would go through because you're eating for two, um, you're taking vitamins, you're intentionally um, getting the nutrients that's required to, to carry a baby to term. You're trying to hide it. Um, so, you know, assuming that, you know, some weight gain is normal in children um, at various ages, particularly in their teens and their, you know, I, I would assume that, you know, it, it can be hidden, you know, baggy clothes, whatever. You know, I, I, I don't know, but I don't know that, you, you know, how you hide that from your family for that long and you know this is a, it can happen it, apparently it does that this is not the first case we're hearing of it's not even the second case it's a frequent occurrence unfortunately so and, you um, know with, with this case and with Skylar Richardson they were both very tiny people and they've hit they hit yeah. it uh, you know uh, it's it's amazing to me rich and, and I haven't given birth yet I'm not counting out the possibility you know it could happen but uh, I would imagine that it's, um, you know, to, to do that quietly for 18 minutes in a bathroom, 
I don't know how you control that. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, listen, I, I've never given birth either, but I have attended two of them. Yes. And they were very loud events in all respects. The, 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 the mother was loud, uh, the new baby was loud, so it is hard to imagine that happening and nobody hearing anything, you know, if it's happening in the bathroom. I mean, the, the whole thing seems tragic. Uh, I wish we lived in a country where we prioritized health care and women's rights and reproductive decision making. But since we apparently don't, I think we might see more and more of this kind of thing. Okay. And that is Rich Schoenstein officially on his soapbox. So he's going to step off of that. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back uh, more on the other side.